Hello, welcome and get ready. We're about to speed through the highlights from Wednesday night's Can Lions Awards show. I'm Rhea Hebden and for the first time this year, Can Lions is letting everyone everywhere have access to the Lions Award shows. Every day this week, we'll be showcasing key highlights, sharing lots of lion winning creative work, giving you some behind the scenes peeks and making sure you get the inside scoop from Can Lions right here on the French Riviera. For those of you who are new to this, the Cannes Lions International Festival of Creativity has been championing creative excellence since 1954, with the goal of providing a definitive global benchmark for creativity that drives progress. And this week, thousands of brilliant creatives, marketing geniuses, agency and media professionals are here with us in the south of France to enjoy outstanding creative work from all over the world. With everyone hoping that they too have done what it takes to win a lion. So let's kick off with the five biggest stories from our third day here on the French Riviera. First up, today the Creative Effectiveness Lions have seen a dramatic 83% increase in entries. This massive jump highlights the growing importance of this award and the measurable impact of creativity within the industry. The world's most powerful industry leaders gathered at Cannes Lions. Bosses from the world's biggest agencies and brands joined forces for the Global Growth Councils for Progress to tackle five big themes. Their findings will be revealed live on stage this Friday. Cannes Lions really is a global event this year. We've welcomed people from Rwanda to the festival for the first time ever. And teams from both Uzbekistan and Tanzania are back after more than a decade. There was a Cretaceous call to action at Cannes Lions. Frankie the Dino arrived at the festival to deliver a wake-up call to the industry about the climate emergency. As he said, dinosaurs had an asteroid, but what's our excuse? And finally, the winners of AKQA's annual student advertising competition were revealed. Now in its 16th year, the Future Lions competition tasks the next generation of creative thinkers to come up with innovative ideas. The winning piece, 10 Week Tea, will now be brought to life by Gymshark and AKQA. Now let's go to the red carpet and see what people were saying before they went into Wednesday's awards show. Which brand would you like to see win big tonight? Yes. Okay, so there was a campaign that I watched earlier today. Um, it's called the Tampon Book. I love the Beyond Generations that Xbox did. I would love to see them win. Yeah. And for yourself? Um, I personally just want to see a woman of color up there, like taking home that award and grabbing it. So, Who you'd like to see win big? Mm -hmm. I'm just rooting for the truth and whatever truth there is in advertising. I love that. Keeping it real. So who are you rooting for to win tonight? So I'm with Google and we did a program for Real Tone, mm -hmm. which is inclusive uh, for the phone and we can shoot um, all types of skin tones. Who would you like to see win tonight? Uh, Banda, Banda Agency. It's Banda. from Ukraine. Yes. Good luck, Banda. Ak Market, the campaign made by Marcella. Uh, Famous Grey with uh, the great campaign we did for Volvo. I'm working for a consulting firm called Bain Company, so I would love for my company to win a lion. So who would you like to see win a lion tonight? Um, I'd love to see Burger King because that was really exciting, clever and beautiful. First of all, FCB Group, that's us. Absolutely. Yes. And oh my goodness, so many awards you've been nominated for. So congratulations, Thank you so good luck Thank you so much. and enjoy the award. Hey, you should do. Have a good time. <laughs> I am. I'm having a lovely time. <laughs> now let's get into some of the great creative work that's already been winning the big prizes here at Cannes Lions. The Lions are cut into many categories, including film, mobile, media and so on. There are also Lions dedicated to specific sectors like the Health Lions and Entertainment Lions. Other Lions are devoted to recognising advertising and branded communications that really do make a difference. The Glass Lion celebrates culture-shifting creativity and the Sustainable Development Goals Lions celebrate initiatives that address the United Nations goals. For each of these categories, there are hundreds if not thousands of world-class entries from all over the globe. An international jury of experts in the field then selects a shortlist for each lion and from this list, winners are selected to win bronze, silver and gold lions and if there's truly an outstanding piece of work, a Grand Prix. 
So let's see what a Grand Prix winning piece of work actually looks like. Last night, the Brand Experience and Activation Jury awarded a Grand Prix to Dentsu Creative Bengaluru for the Unfiltered History Tour. Let's take a look at that piece, followed by a quick chat with the winners themselves. The British Museum is a public institution dedicated to human history, art and culture. Come discover over 80,000 works from around the world, here in London. You are now viewing the Gregal Shield. Captain James Cook was a British... We're now looking at the Gregal Shield, which was taken from my people. I'd say the British Museum is the world's largest receiver of stolen goods. We're launching an interactive tour of some of its most contested artefacts. There were two foreign powers in rivalry over Egypt. One of them, one over the other, and they took the war spoils of the other. I feel I've received a balanced narrative. Museums around Europe are slowly realizing that exhibiting items taken by force hundreds of years ago from other countries is kind of gross. And it's about time. We can't change the past, but we can change how we engage with it in the present. So firstly, congratulations. First question is, what do you think made your work Grand Prix winning? <laughs> wow. I guess it was the, the impact that we feel that we've had with this project. You know, um, in my job with Vice and Vice World News, we're releasing films, articles all the time, which reach millions of people, but not often do you see something sort of influence in online discourse, which goes a lot further. You know, we saw people sort of react to what we were putting out, go to the museum, take the tour, film videos of themselves taking the tour, put up videos on TikTok, then those go crazy as well. You know, the most viewed video on TikTok with the British Museum hashtag is of the Unfilled History Tour. So absolutely, it feels like that started an important conversation which has a long way to go. And what does it mean to have won the Grand Prix? I think um, just you know getting this validation from a creative entity like Can is going to encourage more creative businesses to talk about this issue that so many people across the world suffer from, and it's just going to this is just the start. So hopefully we'll see more and more campaigns talking about colonialism and the impact it has across across the world. It's also making me feel like we need to get our act together and work out version two of this project. So yeah, <laughs> pressure's on now. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and the last question is. What message do you have for all of the other people who worked on this back home? All the people who you work, who worked together to make this happen? I mean, thank you so much for making such a kind of passionate, expert, emotive project along with us. The voices that we had speak in this campaign, these are people who are sort of deeply connected to the artifacts that are sitting in the museum. And I think if you experience this project and listen to their stories, it's, you really understand the context of what it means for them and what it means for these objects to be sitting in the museum today. So, you know, it was an absolute honor to get the opportunity to sort of put their stories forward. Um, but ultimately, it's their stories that matter the most. Yeah, I'd like to thank all my colleagues, all my pals, who contributed so much to the project. It's a hundred plus people team. Everyone contributed so much, so much. Without them, nothing was possible. It's, this project is a testament a, a, a true united team can achieve so much. I'm joined now by the wonderful Sonali Krishna, who is the anchor and senior editor at The Times Network. Welcome, Sonali. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Tell us, how's it gone tonight? Um, super excited. Yes. That was the energy today. Uh, everybody was uh, stoked about the fact that they're in person after like a three year sabbatical yes. uh, and uh, a lot of great work was showcased mm -hmm. and it was a, it was very high energy. Lots of people happy to be winning uh, Lions at Cannes Lions. Yes and lots of people very happy to be seeing the work in Cannes. Wonderful and I also hear this was the first time a Lion's been awarded for creative commerce. Yes it was a new category that was uh, that debuted today. Right. Uh, very interesting and also gives us a sense of uh, where this industry is heading. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of a push towards performance. Mm -hmm. So creativity actually translating into moving the needle in the market. And I think creative commerce is one such category that they debuted today, which, uh, you know, showcased how creativity can actually uh, move, actually impact business output. 
Okay, exciting times. Uh, let's talk now about this particular piece of work. Why do you think the judges chose it? Okay, so I think we're talking about uh, the Vensu work that yes. won the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. uh, I think two things really, one in terms of just the sheer content and uh, for all of those who've seen the campaign, uh, it's interesting because history is always written by the victor uh, and it is really their interpretation mm. of what transpired. Uh, this is interesting because there is an alternate truth uh, and I think this particular campaign has the potential to uh, wake up people's consciousness across the globe. Uh, and this is one such campaign I think that touched, uh, you know, it, 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 it does bring up relevant conversations that need to take place. Uh, and secondly, of course, the use of, of uh, augmented reality, which was done so seamlessly. So it is actually being used by lay consumers across uh, social media, especially Insta in this case, yeah. to, uh, you know, to understand what's happening. So it was a very, very... Uh, pointed campaign, I think, that was deserving to win. Mm. And on the note of augmented reality, do you think we'll start to see more brands use augmented reality in their campaigns to tell alternative narratives? Absolutely. I mean, Can Lions 2022 is uh, more of a tech conference than a creative conference. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, day, it's day three, end of day three. And, uh, you know, all I've talked about and all people are talking about yeah. is Web3, the metaverse, crypto, <laughs> NFTs, yes. uh, you know, so it's, it, we are definitely uh, becoming more of a tech industry mm. uh, or a tech enabled industry. So augmented reality is definitely the, the new uh, normal going forward and, and yes. Now, the magical thing about Can Lions is that anyone, anywhere can enter and has just as much chance to win a lion as anyone else. So we're running a daily feature highlighting creatives from all over the world, talking through their entry to Can Lions this year. Today, we're off to Brussels in Belgium to meet Nico and Geoffrey from Mortier Brigade. I'm Geoffrey Mass. Uh, I'm, I'm an art director at uh, Morty Brigade. And uh, I'm Nico. Hello. I'm a copywriter at Morty Brigade and uh, also a musician in Twin Toes. Uh, we work for Morty Brigade for five years together now. So Morty Brigade is a creative agency based in Brussels and uh, we work for a wide range of clients from uh, Equal Pay Day, uh, but also for Brussels Public Transport, for example. The mantra of the agency is who dares win, so we try to do surprising uh, work. The name of our Lion Entry is the Playlist Song, uh, and it's to promote a new upcoming band from Belgium named Twin Toes. Uh, for this, we wrote a song using only Spotify playlist names. As a creative and a musician, uh, and a musician of Twin Toes, I wanted to find an ID to launch to launch my bands. We started to look for insights together with Geoffrey and uh, realized how official Spotify playlists were important uh, for artists with their millions of followers. So we started to take a look closer and we eventually had fun with playlist names and started to puzzle them to uh, form sentences. Well, we thought there was something there and then we shared the idea with my uh, bandmate uh, called Antoine. Um, and we wrote together lyrics uh, and that made sense and we tried to tell like a nice story with all those playlist names posted together and that's how the playlist song came alive and the idea behind the music video came also pretty natural because we chose to recreate all the playlist visuals, uh, the Spotify visuals but we put ourselves in the picture. So we had fun doing that as well. I think the big, really big challenge here was to recreate the 33 different Spotify visuals uh, with as much accuracy as possible with only three uh, shooting days. So we were really needed to find uh, all the exact clothing from also the furniture to recreate the props from, uh, for example, a vintage pink paper foam to a miniature smoking mountain. Uh, well, we wanted to enter the campaign to Cannes Lions because, of course, it's like the most um, prestigious advertising festival in the world, <laughs> of course. Uh, and maybe also, uh, I don't know, to, to please maybe my, my younger uh, student self, 
uh, when I was a student looking at all these amazing uh, winning ideas with like uh, jealous stars <laughs> in my eyes or the campaign the playlist song got awarded in many festival in Eurobass in Clio Extra and Can Lion would be like the cherry on the cake for us that would be the one that means the most for us. Fantastic, and good luck to the Mortier Brigade team this week. Now, let's move on. This is a fast-moving highlight show after all. Next up, we're going to the Lumiere stage in the Palais de Festival here in Cannes. It's literally four floors down from our studio. We're going to see Raja Raja Manar, who is the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer at Mastercloud, and this year's Jury President of the Creative Effectiveness Lions. This award is rather different, as it's only eligible to winners from previous years by invitation only. The Creative Effectiveness Lions celebrate the measurable impact of creative work and look at how the creative work has met business objectives, secured positive customer outcomes and driven sustainable business impact over time. Let's now see Raja explain in front of thousands of people here in the theatre how his jury selected their Grand Prix winner, followed by the original winning piece of work from 2020. This particular category, when you talk of creative effectiveness, we had to make sure that we are aligned with the definitions, what is effectiveness, and make sure that we are evaluating things deeply against the criteria that are as objective as we can be, and also looking at creativity. So overall, the exercise has been fantastic, and it was delightful to see so many amazing entries that have come our way. Our task was not easy at all. And I'll just state uh, one point, which is that there have been significant themes and something which particularly gladdened our hearts as a jury was the amount of focus that was there on linking purpose to the business in an authentic way. So with that, thank you. Thank you, Raja. Contract for Change guarantees farmers who sign today that Michelob Ultra will be their first organic customer three years from now when the organic transition is complete. That certainty of having a buyer removes the biggest barrier to going organic. During the three-year transition, our production drops, so we lose money. The contract includes a commitment from Anheuser-Busch to buy the crops during the transition for its yearly production of non-organic beers at a 25% higher price, so the farmers keep the same income. Sonali, this is such a great story. Do tell us more about it. Well, you know, the creative effectiveness category is, is I think, a very important category because this is by invitation only. Uh, and it's because these campaigns have been campaigns that have been running for, for at least five years before they can make it to this. I know, it's so clever, isn't it? Yes, and it's important because sometimes you can just have a campaign that's a, that's a flash mm. and then leaves, right? And, and it just wins for the sake of winning. Mm. But a sustained campaign that's actually moving uh, business output is important. Uh, so, which is why this campaign is good because they won the Grand Prix uh, in 2020, the PR Grand Prix, and now they're back. And this commitment that they have made, and they, these are pre-signed contracts, uh, you know, guaranteeing them a 25% increase in their revenue is heartening. And uh, you know, we can have better beer. Well, yeah, and it could be the sign of the future and more farmers getting involved as well. Yes. So the Creative Effective Lions obviously saw a huge increase in uh, entries this year. Right. Why do you think that was? Uh, because I think the entire industry and especially marketers are putting more pressure on agency folks uh, to map creativity to business output mm -hmm. and not creativity for the sake of creativity. We're not artists, we are commercial artists, as they would say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so hence... Uh, you know, creative effectiveness is a great way to actually measure creativity. Did it actually sell your product? Mm -hmm. uh, and that is why I think more and more marketers and people who want to prove that they're very good in creativity are pushing for this category because it shows them that I've actually solved the problem. And made a huge difference. Yes. Mm. Do you think we'll see more brands making these long-term commitments to tackle sustainability then? Um, I have a slightly controversial response to this one. Okay, we're all okay. ears. It's, it's too pronged. 
I say it's great there's a conversation, mm. but I'm and everybody's talking about it. And sometimes I feel when I speak with marketers, I feel they're NGOs, not businesses, right? Because mm. everybody's talking about doing good, meaningful stuff. Uh, but a lot of it is just PR-ish. It's it's just uh, you know just to sound good. Mm. Uh, but a very few companies are actually moving the needle when it comes to sustainability. Mm -hmm. I had a long conversation with Mark Pritchard, who's the chief brand officer of PNG, and he's and he was he, and he's actually uh, pointed this out to the industry, saying that you first grow your company, and in the process do good. You can't do good first and then look at growth. Because it doesn't work like that. You first run your business effectively, and in that business, do good. Some interesting, some interesting <laughs> thoughts there, Sonali. And I'm sure you'll get everybody talking. Thank you so much. <laughs> do stick around because we've got more coming up. Right. Let's now turn to some of the conversations you're having on socials. So Lucy Harvey, judging says, she says, judging's complete. A lot of case studies, a lot of debate and a lot of snacks. Huge thanks to Cal Lions for the opportunity. So Lucy's been part of the uh, jury for the PR Lions. Oh, this is a nice uh, group photo of the team from Service Plan. They've won a Grand Prix for their work on The Wish. That's a craft award there. Lovely photo. What else have we got here? Oh, one of my dreams came true. So we're making dreams come true here in Cannes. Uh, Bruno from the agency Almo and his partner Daniel have won two golds, one silver and one bronze. So there you have it. Now for something completely different. We're going to go right inside one of the jury rooms here at Can Lions. This is where hours and hours of debate and discussion leads to hard decisions on who won what. Here is Can Lion CEO Simon Cook to give us the inside track on how it all works. Hi, I'm Simon Cook. I'm the CEO here at Lions. So we're on our way this morning to brief our juries who are coming together for the first time to set the benchmark once again in person for the Lions this year. It's important that we brief them and it's a really comprehensive briefing to make sure they understand the full process, understand how robust it is. But it's also a chance for our presidents to set the tone for judging and talk a little bit about the criteria that they should be considering this year when awarding the Lions. Up until now, they've been judging remotely from home, but coming together today for the first time to judge the shortlist work, and then that's gonna put them in a great place to actually award the Lions. So today we are meeting four juries, but across the week we're going to be looking at 29 in total. All of our juries are made up of experts and specialists from all over the world. And that includes, of course, uh, chief creative officers, creative directors, people on the creative agency side, but then also increasingly brands. Obviously last year they were judging two years worth of work. And because of everything we've been through over the last two years with the global pandemic, that shift in the work, I think, is going to tell a really interesting story about where we've been over the last two years, but more importantly, where we're headed as an industry. Just being able to be in the same room together with people again, and hearing each of those perspectives and being able to kind of comment on the creativity has been very wonderful. Being face to face with your fellow jury members and stuff, you get to debate, discuss, have great dialogue, just to be able to connect with people and, and forge great relationships as well. This is my fourth time on a jury. It's great, it's really meaningful. We have an excellent jury. Just really happy to be here in this beautiful spot. Well, that wasn't what I was expecting at all. I mean, the jurors talk about it with such reverence, but it's just a room with people in it. There you go. Now it's time for us to take you behind the scenes again. Juan Senor has been running onto the famous stage here at the Palais de Festival in Cannes to present the prestigious Cannes Lions Awards for 17 years now. Juan is the king of the stage, greeting winners from all over the world in their native tongue and has given hundreds of people some of their most memorable moments in their creative careers. So what's it like to hand out the lions that everyone wants? And what has he learnt along the way? Let's meet the iconic man himself. My name is Juan Señor. Juan Señor. Juan Señor. Juan Señor. Señor. I'm the host of this, the Cannes Lions Festival of Creativity. So I've been hosting Cannes Lions for 17 years. 
It all started for me, I was a television presenter, a news television presenter, and then I decided to quit. I sort of said, that's enough. And then uh, Can Lies was looking for a journalist, somebody with credibility, and I uh, gave it a go, and I got the gig. A day preparing for the show is incredibly intense. First, we look at all the shortlisted work, all the winners. That's a lot of work to look through. Then there's a collective script reading with the entire technical team where we go through everything and make sure everything is in place. Then we come back for what's called a technical rehearsal. And that's where we play everything out, try everything. It's very, very elaborate. It's a highly produced show, but we go over absolutely every single detail. And there's the famous seven Ps that proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. And that's what we try to do, really, uh, because the moment you assume anything, that anything goes wrong. Yes, in the last 17 years have been some incredible, memorable moments. I've had dogs come on stage and announce, horses. I've had a robot come on stage. We had, really, the world's first uh, massive selfie. You're surprised all the time by the level of creativity in the show. My advice for people coming on stage is to just really enjoy the moment. It's a career-changing moment for a lot of people. This is the equivalent of winning an Oscar. Just enjoy it. Do whatever you want on stage. Just walk on and just do your thing. Let's now look at another of the big winners from the Wednesday Awards show. The Mobile Lions celebrate device-driven creativity where handheld or wearable elements are integral to the idea and essential for the execution. Let's take a look at the brilliant piece of work that won the 2022 Mobile Lions Grand Prix and meet the people who made it possible. People with darker complexions have always struggled with having good lighting. It's still reaffirming this idea that black people aren't worthy of being seen. Going back decades, camera film was optimized for light skin. And in today's smartphone cameras, that bias persists. So we set out to design Google's most equitable camera with a strong focus on making a better experience for people with darker skin tones. Working directly with Google's product and engineering teams, they tested the Pixel 6 camera and Google Photos Editor across a wide range of tough lighting conditions. The result is Realtone, a collection of technical improvements to the Pixel 6 camera and Google Photos that more accurately and beautifully highlight the nuances of all skin tones. Nobody should think that their skin is a problem. It's on us to change the way the tools work. And it's not just about a camera. We hope that Realtone represents a framework that inspires everyone in this industry to innovate with and for people who haven't been seen fairly. This is just the beginning of seeing the world through a more truthful and equitable lens. Firstly, <laughs> congratulations. What do you think made your work Grand Prix winning? Uh, first, on behalf of all of us, thank you for the opportunity. Um, this is a long, long time in the making, and it's special to be here at the end of a five-year journey and know that this is also just a beginning for us. Um, I think what's special about the Real Tone work is that we started with an insight that's been a problem for my and other communities around the world for decades, and then said, okay, let's not just lead with the marketing idea, but let's go to the product and actually try and fix this at a technical level and then waited until we were sure that we had a proof point to share with the world that was worthy of sharing. Uh, and then told stories about that work that were really resonant and made with and by members of our community around the world. So um, I think that through line is what made this really special. And so the second question is, what does it mean to you to have won the Grand Prix? Oh man, I'm early in my career, so this is a special start, but I want to pass the mic. I oh mean, my God, it's amazing. <laughs> Congratulations say, you guys. to the whole team. We got Brazil in the house. We got Argentina, Latin America, yes. the States. Yeah, super special. And my last question is, what message do you have to everyone who works on this project who aren't here, but who, who are back home? What message do you have for them? I think everybody who's close to this work knows that this is really just the beginning. There is so much left to be done on this issue. And we're taking this milestone as a reminder of how urgent that work is. And as a reminder of our gratitude to everybody who's touched this work. You know, we're here today, but there are hundreds of people who've touched this work that aren't here. Uh, and that's just been tremendous to, to see and feel as a team too. 
Axe and Ali. Such a clever campaign, that. Love this it? campaign. Yeah, it's so good. So do you think we'll be seeing this technology becoming a new standard across all camera devices? It better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't know before I saw this campaign that the camera was actually optimised for just lighter skin. Mm. That is so racist. I know. Right? But I think... It, in a Unintentionally. World, yeah. In a world where we're discussing and being more inclusive, more there's more diversity talk, uh, this better happen quickly. Mm -hmm. So I do think uh, it should be the standard going forward. Yeah. I'd like better pictures. I'm brown. Absolutely. Well, you're naturally be you're beautiful. You don't need any, any filters or anything. But no, <laughs> the principle is the same. I agree with you. So looking beyond the technology, though, what other aspects of this campaign do you think the jury recognised as being important? Uh, the fact that there is a large community of the world that is uh, not recognized yeah. or not uh, serviced, yeah. right? And I think uh, this is becoming more of a conversation just given the fact that what we're seeing globally, there's so much of a geopolitical tension going on in the world. We're so polarized as a world. We aren't evolving, we're regressing. Mm -hmm. So I think advertising has the power to uh, spotlight such campaigns and make it bigger and hopefully we'll become better humans and more inclusive absolutely, absolutely. so do you think this one uh, pieces of work that has successfully broken out beyond advertising to impact culture and society i definitely think it has the potential mm -hmm. but i think it's very slow but it's a start uh, uh, and a uh, few brands have the potential and are doing stuff like Google. I'm very impressed by all the work I saw today by Google, by the way. Yes. They did a whole campaign on, uh, you know, Down syndrome for, 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 for speech therapy because nobody thinks that they can't, Google does not understand them. Right. Right? And I never thought about it until I saw the campaign. Right. So yes, there are definitely brands that are doing some real good, mm. uh, but everybody needs to start thinking better, bigger, and be more altruistic without, uh, you know, uh, chest thumping about it. Because I think some of it is all about chest thumping and getting more PR mm. than actually doing good. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sonali. It's honestly been great having you on the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much. This week is going fast, so fast, I can't believe we only have two more shows to come. I do hope you're enjoying the programme as much as I am. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the winners from the Thursday Awards show, including the brand new creative B2B Lions, the Social and Influencer Lions, and the always fascinating PR Lions. Don't miss it, we're going to be seeing a lot of very inspiring creative work. Now, to close today's show, we're going back to the red carpet to hear from some more of Wednesday night's winners. How's my tie? How's my tie? Good, good, good. Yeah, look good. All right, cool. Practice. With this lion, I'm gonna win a real lion with the series with this lion. Let's just, let's just go. With this lion, I'm going to win another one next year, and it would be a Grand Prix. With this lion, more women are gonna come and get even more than this. With this lion, uh, we're gonna have a party. With this lion, we save millions of women in the Peru. With, With this, this lion, lion, we're gonna keep working. <laughs> With this lion, I wanna inspire more people to do work like this. With this lion, I hope that we, everyone does real tone on every single platform. I hope we continue this forever. With this lion, we're gonna set the world on fire in a good way. Back on the red carpet for day three of the awards, Can Lions 2022. I'll see you guys tomorrow.